Hey folks, how you doing? Hopefully you're all having a great day today. Step into my office. This little corner of my shop is what I call my office, right? So this is my main editing computer. The computer in right here behind me is my CNC computer. It's just an old laptop with, with a monitor, nothing fancy. This right here is where my entire business resides, basically. I make woodworking videos for a living, have been since 2014, and therefore I create a lot of video files. I spend a lot of time on the computer editing video files. And during the progression of all of this, my storage needs have changed. Now, I've gotten better with not hoarding all kinds of digital data, but I still require a decent amount of uh, storage to do what I do. So real quick, December 8, 2022, which is here in a couple months, will be a full decade of uploading videos to YouTube. I uploaded my very first video December 8, 2012. So this December will be a full decade, which is kind of crazy to think about. But I was editing videos even before then. In, in, in 2010, I actually proposed to my wife with a little cell phone video that I edited. It was a slideshow of some photos of us with some text. And I just thought, man, I was just super, super spiffy. The rest of that story is for another day. But anyway, uh, it was like a little 320, 360, 3, 380p, whatever it is, the little 300 size <laughs> video and i think it was either a it was a blackjack cell phone or an htc1 cell phone i forget which one of those i think it was the blackjack where i actually played this video to propose and all that stuff so even before making youtube videos i was editing videos uh, fast forward to 2016 I bought this camera that I'm currently recording with, which is a Sony a6500. And this is my first 4K camera. Can you believe it? 4K, it's awesome, right? Well, that was November of 2016, this camera came out. I pre-ordered it a couple months prior to that. And then in, if I'm not mistaken, February of 2017 is when I realized I've got some storage problems. So I got this particular NAS, DS 1515 Plus from Synology. And ever since then, I've been using this as my main hard drive for all of my computers. So I have two computers here in the shop, three, three computers in the house. All of them are connected to this home network. The problem is, this NAS should not be in this shop. So I'm gonna replace it because the motherboard just died in it and I think it's my fault. But when I do replace it and get it all up and running, I'm going to bury an underground ethernet from the shop to the house and put it in the house. So, so there's that. DS 1515 Plus, a couple days ago, a couple weeks ago, I should say, I went on a camping trip, came back. It was four days that we were gone. And during that time, I got a notification on my phone of a high temperature warning here in the shop. And I got that message from my mini splits. Modern technology is amazing. So it got really hot in here and I forgot to turn the NAS off before I went. When I came home, I don't know if it was the heat. I don't know if it was the insane amount of dust that I blew out of it after taking it apart. Wow but the motherboard died on the DS1515 Plus. So I'm going to upgrade to a DS1522 Plus. Is that right, DS1522 Plus? That is correct. Upgrade my NAS, but the cool thing is I still have all of that data on my drives. I took them out and I numbered all of the drives in order. See, there's, there's the number two. So this one goes after one and before three, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, so I got all my drives, and if I'm not mistaken, I've got a, a, a um, what's the word I'm looking for? A guide on Synology's website where I can put these in the exact same order in the new NAS, so long as the same model lineup, I believe that's the case, and it should be able to rebuild, migrate, whatever the term is, to where I still have all of my data, please, please have all of my data intact and have it up and running on a new NAS. So let's jump into the computer and we'll start that. Online in the Synology Knowledge Center, I found a guide or a tutorial on how to migrate data between a Synology NAS via the hard disk drives. Uh, how do I do that migration? 
Well, in this case, there's two different options. You can migrate between two identical Synology NAS models. So it gives you an example of a DS720 Plus to a new DS720 Plus. I am not doing the exact same model simply because the model that I, w I currently have has been upgraded. So I'm going from a 1515 Plus to a 1522 Plus. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the same family of NAS. It's basically the next iteration of the same model, but it's not the same model. So I'm not going to follow this. I'm going to migrate between uh, different Synology NAS models. Now, section one or steps one through six involves accessing your old source NAS to make some changes. I cannot access it. The motherboard is shot. So I'm going to start here at number seven. Uh, to remove the NAS from, remove the drives from the source NAS, making sure to note the order of each drive as it was installed, right? So I've already done this. I, I labeled all of my drives when I pulled them. So now let's jump to number eight, where we install the drives in the same order they were installed in the source NAS. In the box, we obviously have the new NAS, 1522 Plus. It's a five bay NAS. Uh, keys to lock or unlock each one of these bays. So once you have it set and you don't want mischievous fingers from playing with stuff, you can actually lock these in place. You wouldn't want some kid to walk off with the drive. That would be uh, not fun. Some kid or some malicious individual. Anyway, you can lock the drives if you want to lock the drives. There's screws to secure the drives to the drive carriages. Cradles, drive cradles, whatever they're called. Two ethernet cords, which is neat. And of course, the power cord. Just so I don't get confused when I separate the drive from the tray, I wrote the number on the drive itself. Now these trays, I think I'm saying the wrong thing. Tray, cage, I don't know. But the, they're, they're toolless installation. This is just a, a pin plate, I guess you could say, that, that goes through these holes into the hard drive and kind of locks it in place. But they just peel off, unlocking the hard drive from the tray, the cage. So now you can take this out and move it to the next one. Uh, I mentioned a second ago when I did when I showed what was in the box, that there was a little baggie of screws, and there's no screws needed to to mount these to the trays. Those screws, if I'm not mistaken, are for these holes right here for a smaller two and a half inch uh, solid state drive. So if you wanted to put solid state drives in here, uh, you can do that as well. So you don't have to have mechanical spinning hard drives. So out with the old tray in comes the new one. Let's see, gotta get these off first. Let's not confuse everything. New side pieces off. Old drive into the new holder. I'm gonna call this 17 different things. The, the tray, the holder, the cage, the hard drive caddy, the doohickey with the thingamabob. It's all of the above. Whatever you want it to be, whatever you want it to be called, call it that. That's fine too. All right, drive number five goes in and we repeat. Two things and, and don't yell at me. <laughs> the first thing is I'm putting the new NAS right in the same location as the old NAS plugged up the exact same way. And it's just temporary just to get this up and running. I'm going to use my main computer to get it going and then move it into the house, change the IP address and put it on a network switch and have it in a climate controlled environment that is way less dusty. So this is just temporary. Don't yell at me. <laughs> the second thing is, I think the culprit, or I think I found the culprit of, of why the, I think I found the reason why the first motherboard died. And I don't think it was heat and I don't think it was dust now. That was initially like, well, that's basically all it can be. But if it was heat, I think the hard drives would fail first. The mechanical hard drives, not the motherboard. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but the problem that I found was as I'm using, reusing half of the power cord plugged into this little transformer, I realized that the power cord was never plugged into my surge protector uninterrupted power supply, my battery backup. It was simply plugged into the wall. So the four days that I was gone camping, we may have had a, 
a surge in electricity. We may have had a voltage drop. We may have had something that fried the motherboard. And the, the first NAS was set up to where during a power failure or after a power failure, it would automatically reboot. So if I came in uh, after my trip and saw it running, well, then I would never have suspected something was to happen, right? It was still up and running. The lights were on anyway. So I think a surge or a voltage drop fried the motherboard. So that means that this new one has to be plugged into an uninterrupted power supply. It is right now, and it will be when I go in the house. I cannot believe I did not have it plugged in to a surge protector at the very least. After powering on the new NAS and making sure all the disk drive lights light up, which took about two minutes, Go to find.synology.com. This changed it to finds with an s.synology.com. Thought I mistyped that, but I uh, know it adds it there. Anyway, it'll find the NAS on your network, tell you the IP address that it's connected to. Uh, I've used this several times in the past just to figure out what my IP address was because it kept changing on me because I didn't make it a static IP address. Lesson learned there. Uh, anyway, uh, it'll let me connect, so I'll press that right there. I have read all this. I promise you I've read every bit of that word for word because I always do that. Let's press next. Let's press continue to that privacy statement. Again, I've read this, memorized it. I could recite it if I, if I wanted to on uh, days that I'm joking around, but I'm not going to. Press continue or connect or whatever that button was that I just clicked. And it says, welcome back. We've detected that you have moved the hard drives from a DS1515 Plus to a DS1522 Plus. It's like a movie. They know, what's, they know what's going on. You can migrate your data and settings to your new Synology NAS now. Click Migrate. So I wanted to uh, show you the first two steps there because there was a couple clicks that are not listed in the uh, steps here. So it just says find the destination NAS and double click on it. Well, I clicked con Connect and Continue, and now it's telling me to migrate. Okay, let's do that. Let's click on that. Uh, retain system configurations, that sounds great. And keep the files and settings. Please do not delete my business. <laughs> Please do not delete my files. Uh, let's see, reset the system configurations, but keep the files only. No, let's just retain, let's see what happens. Let's press next. Automatically download the latest software version, or the latest version from Synology's website. This is the DSM manager, the disk station manager or manually upload. No, 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 we're gonna automatically download. I'm connected to the internet, let's go. Okay, so that didn't take long at all for it to do whatever it needed to do right there. But now it's giving me a 10 minute countdown to restart my disk station. I'm curious uh, to, I'm, I'm curious if this 10 minutes is necessary, if it's doing something in the background, or if we're able to just restart it immediately. I'm impatient, so the little, guy on my shoulder nudging me saying, hey, just push the, push the button, push the button, restart it manually. Uh, but I can't risk losing my data for 10 minutes. So I'm going to be patient, I promise. I'm gonna be patient and I'm gonna be patient. We are up and running. So now it's going to allow me to log in to my old NAS setup with my old username and password, which I will hide. Welcome to DSM 7.1. Next generation data management begins here. Start. All right, we're going to fill out all of this stuff with a new device name and administrator account password and all of that good stuff. Looks like we are up and running with the new refreshed DSM disk station manager version. So looks slightly different. One thing that I want to do, this is set, this automatically went to 192.168.1.24, and I have a bunch of stuff mapped already to .13. So just to get up and running, move some files around before I move the, physically move the Synology inside, I want to go to control panel, I want to go to network, and I want to go to, uh, was it network interface? Is that where I go here to LAN one, press edit, and there we go. Now I can use a manual configuration to change my IP address of this disk station back to what it was before it died on me, the old one. And I will use this until I'm ready to move this into the house. And then for security reasons, all this is gonna get changed. So there's that. Let's close this. Now we are at 192.168.1.13. 
the IP address has been used. <laughs> uh, let's just cancel, don't save. I'm just gonna redo my um, computer configurations to have that dot two four. So let me show you that really fast. Really fast. If I go to um, Windows Explorer, this is directory opus. I, hope, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Directory opus. I use this in place of Windows Explorer because it's got a lot of cool features. But in my computer, this PC, these are my two hard drives on this computer. I'm going to right click and say map a network drive. And from here, I want to put this IP address. So I'll put slash slash 192.168.1.24. And then I'll use my folder structure, which I will hide that on the screen. It's going to ask me to log in and boom, there you go. Now, if I go to my computer, you'll see that I have a network location, a mapped network drive, and I can access my NAS just the same way as I could access a hard drive in my computer. So I want to show you the file structure that I go with. What I do is I typically have uh, uh, structured into two different folders, 01 business, 02 personal. And I put the 0102 so that it could be uh, number one and number two in line. I have a Google Drive folder and some other stuff, but basically this is the main file structure. And then I can go through all of my projects that I've created for this business, which is up to, this is crazy, up to 494 uh, in my archived location. I have six or seven on my main computer. So anyway, that's my little file structure. It's cool to see... Uh, that many projects all in one spot. That's basically it for this video. I was expecting it to be way more time consuming. I was expecting it to have way more manual configuration on my part. I wasn't expecting it to be as plug and play to migrate my data like that. So huge thumbs up for this whole process and it's stress is gone. <laughs> Thank goodness all of my data is intact. I've accessed it, checked some stuff around, checked out a couple things and whew, Thank, thank goodness my data is intact. Um, the second thing that I want to recommend you do is back up your data. So I use a NAS for a couple reasons. The main primary two reasons are, number one, I can access it on all of my devices on my home network. So it's, it's good to be able to communicate between and, and all of that. Number two, uh, RAID redundancy. I, there, depending on how you have a RAID configuration in the NAS, you can... If, the, if one of your hard drives fails, you can pull it out, put a new one in, and it'll rebuild, and you won't lose any data, depending on how it's configured. So I, I like to use the NAS as my primary data storage location for that little bit of redundancy. But I encourage you to back up your data in other locations. So what I do personally is I have two cloud backups. One is a long-term cloud backup that I hope I never have to access. The second cloud backup is Google Drive. It's just handy to have a secondary source for some things that you can access on other devices as well. And the, 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 the other backup option that I do is a, a physical backup. I have a four terabyte external hard drive that I plug in quarterly, every six months, something like that. I probably should do it a lot, a lot more often. Um, but I back up the super important stuff to a physical hard drive and then I get it off of this property. If I back up all of my super important stuff off of the NAS and then put that hard drive on this computer desk and then just say, hey, that's great, I've got a backup. What good is that going to do if this building burns down and it takes every bit of that with it? And what good is that going to do if a tornado comes through here and wipes this facility away and all of that data, all that stuff is just completely physically gone? It's not going to do me any good whatsoever. So if you do back up to a physical hard drive, give that hard drive to a trusted friend. There's a bug in here flying around. Give that back up to a trusted friend that they can properly store. My friend puts it in his safe, in his house, in a different city. So obviously if this place burns down, it's not going to burn up his copy in a different city. But more importantly than that, if a tornado blows through here and just takes out this shop, odds are it's not going to get his city as well. So... So there's that. There's my little piece of advice at the end. Back up your data and back it up off-site as well. That's it for this video. Um, I'm going to sleep pretty good tonight knowing that all my data is intact. Hopefully you guys uh, have a great night, great day whenever you're watching this. You guys take care. Have a great one, and I'll talk to you in the next video.